with more than 35 nations, 30,000 people, and a million components working together, we share one simple goal, to illuminate the way to new energy. Welcome to ITER Now. This week we meet Emmanuel Riesch, the official ITER drone pilot. Having flown over the ITER worksite since 2015, Emmanuel has seen many developments, from the construction of the giant assembly hall and the magnificent tokamak structure, to the auxiliary buildings that now populate the bustling worksite. As things continue to change, Emmanuel enjoys the diversity of both his colleagues and all the workplace challenges that make their home in this unique international environment. This is my drone and I'm flying with that. So this is the, the controller. This is an iPad Pro. And we just need the, the both. Turn on the controller. Turn on the drone. <laughs> <laughs> so we are waiting for the satellite to have good position with the drone. Il faut que la lumière soit bonne. I try to find the, the good angle, the right position, the altitude. The drone is a, a special machine. That, that's the Sokamak building, this one. I was interested by the science project first, and I was very proud to participate to this project. Je peux le dire en français, peut-être? No? Sure. Alors, en fait, moi, j'étais fier de participer à ce projet, parce que c'est un projet de collaboration entre les gens, et qu'aujourd'hui, je pense que l'avenir de l'humanité est dans la collaboration. C'est vraiment un projet qui démontre cette collaboration et que cette collaboration est possible entre les gens et les États et que donc on a une petite chance grâce à ce type de projet d'avoir un avenir un petit peu plus radieux que celui qu'on nous prédit tel qu'elle est faite sur ITER entre les pays est la seule façon correcte de voir l'avenir de l'énergie parce que de toute façon il faudra qu'on partage cette énergie donc il est normal que ce soit une diversité de pays qui mettent en œuvre ce projet, je trouve ça très bien. Alors à chaque fois, je viens régulièrement sur, sur le chantier d'ITER pour filmer avec mon drone, avec mes drones, et effectivement je constate des évolutions importantes, surtout sur tout ce qui est grosses infrastructures. On a vu beaucoup, beaucoup d'évolutions en, en quelques années. D'où l'intérêt de passer régulièrement parce que ça permet de comparer les images. Et donc on voit bien l'évolution d'un passage à l'autre. En passant une fois tous les trois mois, on arrive à voir de très grosses évolutions sur les infrastructures extérieures. Il suffit de faire attention aux murs et aux poutres et aux câbles. C'est un peu compliqué, mais avec un peu de pratique, on arrive à bien voler même à l'intérieur. Et donc on obtient des images qui sont assez spectaculaires et qu'on ne peut pas obtenir autrement parce que l'on a des points de vue que seul le drone peut donner. Et donc maintenant, euh, il est temps de passer au montage, je crois que c'est ce qui va se passer. Donc on va rentrer plus à l'intérieur avec les drones, ce qui est un autre challenge, parce que filmer en extérieur sur ce type de chantier, c'est assez complexe dans la mesure où il y a des grues, des câbles, des machines, tout change en permanence, et donc il faut se réadapter à chaque fois, à chaque nouvelle venue, je dois reprendre conscience du milieu dans lequel mon drone évolue, me réadapter, le mémoriser et puis ensuite voler en évitant tous les obstacles. Oui, donc c'est vrai que venir filmer sur un site commitaire, c'est exceptionnel parce que le projet en lui-même est exceptionnel. Les machines sont exceptionnelles, tout est exceptionnel, on est presque dans la démesure. Et donc, euh, venir filmer ici, c'est fantastique. Euh, pour un pilote de drone, c'est un petit peu un rêve. Quand on aime euh, filmer sur des chantiers, le chantier ITER fait partie des chantiers que l'on rêve de, de voler. That's a good fly. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Bonjour, bienvenue. Welcome to ITER Now. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, we were both sick last oh, week. Yeah. 
So that's why there was no question and answer period. <laughs> and my voice is still a little bit weird. Me too. Yeah. We've got the microphones on like extra sensitive mm -hmm. so you can hopefully hear us this yeah. week. But. So uh, Axel asked, why not inviting YouTubers from various countries in order to gain visibility? That's a good question, and we have done that. Invited YouTubers with uh, more followers than yeah. we have, uh, including, and I'm so sorry, I'm gonna mess up your name here, but Magyarosi Saba from Hungary. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put his link to a video he made a few months ago in the description here. Check it out, it's a great video. Yeah, it is. And, and yeah, he came, did his thing, and got like tons of views and mm -hmm. lots of uh, attention. Positive comments, and yeah. And it was very engaging mm -hmm. and exciting. So. Long answer short is we invite YouTubers or journalists of any kind, any, anybody is welcome to yeah. contact the uh, communications team. We will welcome you with open arms and mm -hmm. you know give you a tour and let you do your thing and we tag you and you tag us and we're all happy YouTubers Yay. together. <laughs> so yes, please come. So ISD says, I'm gonna read this in Japanese. Nice. 日本 no kou sensei desu. と、私は現在学校で電気系技術者としてパワーエレクトロニクスなどについて勉強していますが、核融合炉の研究において電気系の技術者に求められる勉強や研究は何でしょうか。ありがとうございます。えっと、あ、um it's a bit difficult to switch in English. So this person is basically asking they're an electrical engineer, and are there jobs for electrical engineers yeah. here? And the answer is absolutely mm -hmm. yes, but there's also jobs, lots of other jobs available too. Not only as scientists or engineers, you can be um, accountants, lawyers, as like communications. So there's a plenty of jobs which can contribute to either project. So go check our website, either.org slash jobs and the job page is always updated and keep an eye out of it is that correct um, keep, an <laughs> keep, eye, an keep an eye keep an eye on it yeah, yeah. Some guy came to me and he said, stand up later, and he just left. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and wow. you can't, uh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Canardian. Canardian. Huh? Canardian, he responded to our tweets about TF coils, which which is made in Italy and Japan. How are they, how are TF coils distributed around the tokamak in order to make sure any variances are accounted for? Yeah, so it's very amazing that they're building these giant, giant magnets in different countries and they're sending them here and they have to be the exact same. Yeah. And so how do you do that? Well, it's just this amazing precision and uh, discipline and I don't know, ask them, I guess. But uh, once they get here, it's Eater's job to then assemble them in the tokamak and in a circle and, and frame them up so that they all have the exact same Tesla force, the magnetic force is the same for each of them. So um, they are all identical. However, those are the TF coils. The PF coils, are the circular TF ones are the big D-shaped ones that yeah. go around like that? Vertical one. Uh huh. Yeah. The PF coils are horizontal circles, mm -hmm. that and and those are different. Yeah. Um, and they're being made in different countries, but they are different. They're different sizes and they have different properties. So um, interesting, just uh, difference there. So Neil says, don't forget the dilithium crystal. <laughs> Yes. I have no idea, what, what is that? Yes, well, it happens to be, thank you, Neil, for the Star Trek reference, the dilithium crystal, which is a fictional thing from a fictional Star Trek universe that uh, Spock and Captain Kirk are always trying to find the dilithium crystal because it's what their ship needs to help them reach beyond uh, light speed. Okay. You know, there is a connection to be made here. It, it, it okay. almost is, because in Star Trek, every episode, they're trying to find this dilithium crystal, which is this thing that they almost never find, and it's always in the future, kind of like fusion. And, okay. you know, so maybe that's the joke you were getting at there, Neil, but we, instead of looking for our dilithium crystal out there in the cosmos, we are just building one ourselves. Oh! This, this <laughs> far-off thing that never happens, we're making it happen right here. So, unfortunately, there is no dilithium crystal we can use to just make the machine work more quickly than it's going to, 
but uh, yeah, we're doing our best without it. So thank you. Thank you all very much for all your questions. Please uh, keep keep sending us questions, comments on Twitter, on Facebook. Instagram, LinkedIn. Yes, anywhere, yeah. everywhere, email us. We want to include you and uh, do more stuff. So yeah. thank you again. Merci beaucoup. Sayonara.